Okay, testing one, two, three. This sermon's entitled, Feeding the Flock. It's our job as preachers to help feed uh, new believers and whatnot. So let me open with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your word, and for allowing us to grow. Let's pray to allow us to uh, see the need for spiritual growth, and the need for uh, learning, God, learning your word, so that we can preach it and teach others. Uh, bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the Bible talks about <clears throat> uh, teaching and preaching. Let's turn over to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. <laughs> now there, there are two types of people out there, you know, in terms of a, a, preacher, a preacher or a teacher. There are those that are, that are not qualified, and there, there are those that are qualified. Now what determines the qualification? What determines whether or not a person is able to preach or teach? And it's found right here in Hebrews chapter 5. It says in verse 11, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now, what determines whether a person is able to preach or not is if they have something to preach about, if they have a subject, if they know the Bible, and they're studying the Bible. And even if you don't know the Bible very well, you can still preach because the Holy Spirit will preach through you. And I find this to be true. No matter what sermon I've preached, it's the same, it comes out the same because it's the same Holy Spirit behind it. Okay? That's why, but some people just can't hear it. It says in verse 12, For when the time, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now, if you're just getting into the milk of the word, you're not able to preach at this point. You're not able to teach. You know, very, very, you know, a lot of doctrine. You know, you can't preach a sermon on eternal security. You know, or a sermon on some heav heavily, you know, doctrinally loaded subject, where you have to learn the Bible, learn, the, you know, you know what the Bible teaches on the, on the given subject. So that's why it behooves us to get into the Word, to read it heavily, to study it, to pray upon it, ask God, what does this mean? You know, or whatever the passage may be, then God through the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. And then once you grow up, you get into the meat, okay? So you need to, people need to be in the Word heavily, and then they become able to preach. But it says those that are unskillful, they're a babe, okay? But they're just a babe in Christ. So now turn over to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Now, I'm putting these sermons up to, to help feed people. I want them to know, I want them to grow, and to know... Um, you know, whatever it is they need to know, whatever it is God wants to reveal to them, they need to know it. Number one, we're saved by grace. People that come to my channel, and that you know, they know that. What is grace? Grace is the unmerited favor of God. It's something we cannot earn. We, we don't do anything to earn grace. We don't do anything. We can't contribute anything to it. It's all of God. It's all of what God has done for us. Okay, now, so that grace is, like I said, the unmerited favor of God. Nobody can add anything to grace. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that God could save us through his grace. Anyone who believes on Christ and ever, who at any moment has believed on Christ is saved by grace and will never lose their salvation. They'll go to heaven no matter what because the purchase for our salvation was already paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I have to keep pointing that out because people come on, the ch on, 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 my, on my channel all the time. What about works? So what about all, all this other garbage? It's stupid. It's obviously they don't. It's obvious they don't. They don't trust in the finished work of Christ, and they want to add their works, and that's just a sad thing. Now, for such people, I'm not even going to deal with them right now. Uh, I'm talking about saved people who know it's not by works. The point of preaching the Bible is to help people grow. So let's turn. Let's take a look at John 17. Look at verse uh, 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, we live in the world, but as believers in Christ, as Christians, we're not of the world. We're of uh, our heavenly world, in he our heavenly eternity in, 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 you know, in heaven. We're not of this world. Now, look what it says. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, what does that mean to sanctify? Sanctification is a process of being separated away from the things of the earth. You know, sin, evil, satanic things. The Bible says to sanctify them through thy truth. It's not talking about ourselves. Sanctify them. Our job is to help others. 
Our job is to go up to somebody that you go to church with, another believer, and encourage them. Tell them to give them something to hand out, like a little gospel track. Say, here, here's the plan of salvation. You can give this to a, to a friend of yours. You can, you can share this with people. I give out crosses all the time. I gave out crosses yesterday to a bunch of believers. Or actually the day before, rather. I gave a few out yesterday, I believe. And um, I said, look, the point of this is to, to, to share it with others. I don't know. Some of the people, I don't know if they're saved or not. And it's not because I'm not judging them. I just don't know the people. I see people all the time I don't know at our street ministry. People come walking in, rolling stones, you know, just kind of transitorily walking through, passing by, and I just give them, I give them free, free gospel material. Now, I want people to, to be saved, number one. And number two, if they are saved, I want them to have a gospel handout so they can give somebody. And, and a lot of times they're not going to give it out. They're just, they may show it to somebody. So part of our job as preachers is to sanctify them, sanctify other believers, help them grow. Don't ever tell me, don't ever tell anybody how, how to live, that you need to live the Christian life without telling them how. Lewis Berry Chafer put it best, you know, don't tell people how to, don't tell people to be good. Tell them how to be good. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. It's our job as, as teachers to help people grow. Okay? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. Now what does that mean? I'm going to, you know, learn God's word. That's how you get sanctified, through God's word. For their sakes, now listen, you know, it's Jesus Christ talking, but just imagine it's somebody else, you know, that's going to go out and teach, teach God's word. I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. In other words, you have to be sanctified. You have to get into God's Word. You have to know God's Word before you can help others learn God's Word. Period. That's what that means. And it is Jesus talking, and it's, he's making a point. So our job is to feed the flock. So let's turn back to Ezekiel. I wish people would go out and, 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 and spread the gospel. I try to encourage that, and I guess I, I, go, I get a little hard with it sometimes. And I kind of put people down, and I, mean, I, you know, I need to work on that. But you know what? The reason why I get so mad at these non-soul winners out there is because, it, it, for one, it's sad. And number two, I'm tired of people that, you know, that I knew as a child that are now atheists. And that's why I get so frustrated. If somebody would have, would have got their attention at a young age, when they're not so messed up by the world, they're not so falsely indoctrinated by, by uh, man's philosophy, somebody could have gave them the gospel and gotten them saved. Now, it's still up to them, even as an atheist or whatever. It's still up to them. It's, they're going to be held accountable for, them, for, them, for themselves. But for crying out loud, I just wish more people would be sharing the gospel. There'd be less atheists. There'd be less, there'd be less uh, Muslims and, and Jews and Mormons and all these false baloney religions out there. If people would just be sharing the gospel, there, we wouldn't have all this stuff. My, once, once again, it is a person's choice whether they get saved or not, but good night. It's our job to make the choice, you know, Jesus Christ, believe on him. It's our job to tell them the good news. So hang on one second. Let me grab some water and I'll be right back. So that's why I get a little frustrated and bent out of shape when people don't go soul winning. I'm basically yelling, yelling at the people that know better. People that they, they have, they can, they could, they should be soul winning by now. But for the newbies out there that just listen to my sermons, don't get discouraged. Start learning God's word. That's my job. My job is to help teach people the word and to help people understand it. And it talks about that in right here in verse 1 of chapter 34. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? If all I'm going to do is read the Bible for myself, that's selfish. That's self-centeredness. That's selfish. So it's, it, we need to be feeding the flocks. Encouraging people. Now here's some things that I'm going to try to encourage the, the people that listen to um, you know, the YouTube videos and whatnot. We should be praying heavily. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We should be... Um, giving God thanks for saving us. Just saying, look, I don't deserve this. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus Christ. He died for me once and for all. All my sins were put on him. And then thank God for that. And then we need to be reading the Bible every single day. Just get a, pick up the King James Bible and, um, and start reading it. And, uh, and, if they're not, and if you don't have a Bible, just leave me, let me know and I'll, I'll make sure you get one. Some, somehow, by hook or by crook. And then we need to, um, like I said, Go out and share the good news. Now, if you can't hand out the gospel to somebody, go cut some little gospel things out. I call them gospel tickets. Cut them out and just put them everywhere. Now, I've got tons of gospel tickets bagged up in bags. And when I go out today, I'm going to, you know, God willing, and 
put the things everywhere. You could spread the gospel that way. It works. See, I, I don't believe that works. Well, you, you need to try it. Go out and put the gospel everywhere. It's not, it's not hard. You know, like as you're walking by, you, just, you know, you're walking by, you go to the grocery store, you get your food. I don't see what's so hard about taking a gospel ticket out of your pocket and sticking it down on a gum machine. Somebody will pick it up. They will read it. They will find it. I've had kids, you know, I, I know this one kid, this one boy goes around and collects them. He's, everything I put down, he collects. He, he wants them all for himself because he just, he just like, he likes look because he sees, he sees them everywhere he goes because they're all over where I live. The gospel's everywhere. Thousands of these things everywhere. And it's not a bad idea because, look, all people need is to understand the good news. Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again. He's God's son. He's perfect. You know, He gives eternal life as a free gift. The moment you believe on him for eternal life, you're saved and secure forever. And then put some verses on it, like John 3.16. And that's what we need to be doing. It's not difficult. So as, that's, what, that's my job is to tell people how to, you know, what we should be doing. And, you know... There are all sorts of different verses we can look at. If you want a good outline for how to live the Christian life, turn to Romans 12. Let's go ahead and just turn there. Romans 12. Now, some people don't want to learn. They don't, they, don't, they don't want to grow. They don't want to do anything for God. They don't want to serve God. If that's the case, you shouldn't even be listening to this. You just go back to your Nintendo, whatever you, have, whatever you wanted to do, and stop wasting your time here. This is for people that want to grow. And the, yes, I come across a little bit blunt sometimes. I don't really care. The, the truth is more important than, hurt something, than hurting somebody's feelings. They're making somebody, you know, I, I, you, you, you hurt my feelings. You yelled at me. So what? You know, you need the truth. The truth hurts sometimes. A good outline for the Christian life is Romans 12. It starts off with, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Presenting your bodies. Just go out and share the good news. Go out and help people. Go out and, you know... Show people the love of Christ. Go out and praise God. That's what it says. It talks about just making ourselves a living sacrifice. And it finally closes with, Be overcome, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So in other words, don't let Satan drag you down. Don't let Satan in this evil world get you down. Just overcome it with good. Now, all, all 21 verses here is a really good outline for how to live the Christian life. It goes on with uh, rejoicing and hope. Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality, give, giving, going out, helping people out with food, money, whatever. It talks about rejoicing with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. All oh, just read these, read this whole chapter. It's great. It talks about being being simple. It talks about exhorting, exhortation, giving. You know, there's a ton, there's tons of different uh, commands in these, and it's not really commands. It's really just kind of an outline. A command would be, you have to do this. Go out and, and, and pray. Go out. No, it's not a command. It's just it's it's just an outline. He's not demanding anyone to do these things. He's begging them to do this. That's what beseech means to beg. So anyway, that's, that's all I have. The Bible makes it clear. If you jump back into Ecclesiastes, where I was reading, there are so many verses in this portion of Scripture that talk about feeding the flock. Don't feed yourself only. Feed others. Help others. You know, tell people. You know, read the Bible. I tell people to read the Bible. Here, here's where you start. Romans 12. Then it's good to read Colossians. It's good to read Ephesians. It's good to read all of Romans. Because Romans is very doctrinally based. So that's all I have. I encourage people to go out and to share the word, to share the good news of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. John 3, 16. Acts 16, 31. And just to, you know, just to be more diligent for God. And, you know, and he, will, he will, through his word, you know, fill in all the blanks that I left, that I left out. So let me just close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your word and allowing us to just grow and allowing us to study your word and to get to know you better and to become a mature believer. Keep us, keep us uh, safe. Keep us clean and keep us sober. And keep us uh, vigilant. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.